One of the problems with this channel is that it kind of goes two ways. You have the vegan backpacking meals, and then you have the ultralight. Wait, 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 wait. Should totally open with some B-roll footage right here like all the other cool channels. Yeah. Wood pile, snow, perfect. Hold on, hold on. You're missing the music. Put in some music. Way too dramatic. Something softer, more outdoorsy. Show them how fun and natural you are. Ah. Ah. Screwed up. Fix the camera. Yes. All right. Make something go in slow motion. All right. Now do one of those jump cuts. Ah, the clap. You should have had some sound effect right there. Put in the sound effect. Now start the video. You have the vegan backpacking meals, and then you have the ultralight backpacking videos, and those ultralight backpacking videos tend to be on the budget side. And I realize that for some people, those two meet, but for other people, they can care less about the meals, and they can care less about the gear. So I've been questioning whether or not to just go one way or the other, or to continue to do both. And this video, just to throw one more kink in there, has nothing to do with ultralight backpacking and it has nothing to do with vegan meal planning. I wanted to show you my favorite piece of backpacking gear that I have pretty much kept hidden. It has only appeared, I think, in two videos, just real quick. Uh, it's been mentioned a couple of times. And as a matter of fact, I just did a YouTube search last night and I have not been able to find a single review on YouTube on this backpack. It is the one piece of heavy gear I will not give up. And it is my McHale backpack. When I was younger, much younger, so I was probably 22 years old, I was living in the basement of my grandfather's. I ended up having a pretty good job, had some spending money, proposed to my wife, she said yes, and then I think the next call I made was to Mikhail to buy this backpack. And it was one of those purchases that I knew that I would never be able to make for the rest of my life unless I was single and I had that extra cash sitting around. And Mikhail is a very small backpacking company out on the West Coast. And I don't even know how I found them. And for all of you young ones out there, you have to realize that this is pre-internet. This is, I don't even know how I found the name. This would have been when they actually would have sent me some like, you know, copy and machine sort of papers in the mail in a big fat envelope showing all the different pack backpacks they had in black and white. And Mikhail, being a small custom company, they were always kind of known for having these really confusing instructions. Even if you go on their website today, their website is kind of hard to navigate. And I highly recommend, I'm not even going to bury it in the description. It'll be the very first line in the description, the link to their company. Please click on it and check out their stuff. It's backpacks to drool over. Now, this is also probably goes against a lot of the other things I've said on this channel. And that one, it's heavy. And two, it's wicked expensive. This, this backpack on my back costs about $750. Uh, if you go to the Mikhail website today, there are backpacks from anywhere from $900 to $1,000 and up, especially if you, you know, start putting in any sort of features or custom things. Now, the thing about this backpack is that, one, when I purchased it, it was not just for weekend trips. 
it was I was guiding trips out to the Rocky Mountains with kids and I needed something that was absolutely literally bomb proof something that I knew would not let me down something that was incredibly comfortable and so this is a custom made backpack and not in the same sense that I know you can go and you can buy some backpacks today that are custom built and they're kind of like built as you order them they're built to certain sizes but this is literally like the, the, the figures that I had to send in to get this made were kind of crazy. Like I had to measure my exact spine. I had to measure all these other things. And then once I sent in the measurements, I got a call from the company where they verified them and they went over them with me. And one of the things that they had trouble understanding was the size of my torso compared to my body. Uh, that was one of the first questions. They assumed that I had made a mistake in my measurements. And so they had me measure again while I was there on the phone. And apparently I have a longer back than for most people my height. So this being a custom backpack, it is made for me. It is made for someone my exact size, my height. It is made for someone with my torso length. And all of that taken into consideration it is probably the reasons why I have never put on another backpack that has been as comfortable as this one. Every once in a while I would go into a backpacking store, um, REI is popular around here, and I would throw in all sorts of those, you know, the weighted bags and the gear into the backpacks and I would try out the new backpacks that were out and inevitably I never found one as comfortable as this. Again, this backpack is pretty much almost exactly 30 years old. Just like, hang on that for a second. It's 30 years old. Can you name another piece of backpacking gear? Actually, if you can, if you can name another piece of backpacking gear that you still use regularly, that's 30 years or older. Well, some of you aren't even 30 years old, but if you can name a backpack a piece of backpacking gear that's that old that you still use, leave it in the comments because I'm sure people would love to see what that is. And I'm not talking about gear that you still have and you still might use, especially like car camping. I know a lot of my old stoves, that's all my family uses. My tents, that's all we use car camping. I have a moss tent for those of you old folks out there, like the moss tent that was you know, actually made by Mr. Moss. That is 30 something years old. That thing works like it bought it yesterday. Now, this is a backpack that I regularly use and I have kind of hid, kept it hidden and I didn't want to really admit that I use a big heavy backpack on the ultralight budget channel. Um, but anytime that I hit 15 pounds in my other backpacks, I will jump up to this one right here. Now, if I take the top brain off and I take the bottom strap thing off, that would be used to hold like where your tent would have been, uh, I can get it down to about six and a half pounds. I know ridiculously heavy right and so if my other backpack that weighs nothing is now up to 15 pounds I put it in this backpack all of a sudden I'm up to 21 22 pounds but here's the deal I can throw so much weight into this backpack and it feels like just nothing it, it feels like nothing on my back because I can adjust this so perfectly that I feel absolutely no pressure anywhere on my chest or my shoulder. There is nothing that is hanging on me at all. The waist belt. Again, this is a 30 year old pack, 30 year old design. The waist belt is not some soft, squishy thing. It's actually made of this stiff material. And the way that it distributes the weight to my body is just so perfect. The waist belt, with its fast tex buckles. These things are indestructible. It's just, it's a really cool design. It's not a typical buckle. You just slide it in and then cinch it down. It's also got this cool design where it has the dual straps right here. Again, it's extra weight, but it just, it just works. And it makes it feel like you have less weight on your back. It's got this really stiff padding here. And again, this waist belt was designed perfectly that thing that you're looking for, that iliac crescent that sits right there, this weight belt, the waist belt is positioned perfectly over that um, to provide just the perfect support for me. These handles are awesome. <laughs> they are really awesome. They're great for just like when you're really tired to just pl place your hands here. And again, it's extra weight 
but it just makes it so much more comfortable. I find that I use these a lot when I'm going up hills and I tend to bend over and it's just a place to kind of like, ah, I don't know. All the little metal clips, just as a little trivia, these are actually made in my home state, Newington, Connecticut. One of my favorite features, and it seems kind of silly, but are the water bottle holders. So there are two separate pockets that hang on the side. And one of the great things about them is because they're never compressed, the water bottles slide in and out with no issue whatsoever. I know with a couple of my other backpacks that have the water bottles on the side, if you have the backpack totally loaded and stuffed, it will put pressure on that outside pocket and then it's kind of tough to put your water bottle in and out as you pack. The only thing that you could really find wrong is there is some rust on a couple of the buckles. But other than that, that is it. The straps, ah, I forgot the name of these straps. The straps that allows you to adjust it to bring it closer to your body or farther away from your body, just, I, I can adjust those so perfectly and also everything is so easy to adjust on the fly so if all of a sudden you hit a sharp incline so easy to adjust if all of a sudden you're hopping boulders so easy to bring everything into you with just a couple of pulls and just release it if you go to their website and again it's kind of a quirky website to try to navigate and i highly recommend you do it's in the description, the very first line. You don't even have to go digging for it. There's some cool little things about the history and a uh, neat little map showing where they've shipped all of their backpacks to since 1986. And in Connecticut, where I live, I'm only one of 38 people that have ever had a McHale backpack shipped to me. And if you're looking for a guarantee, there is none because they basically say nothing's going to break. And if it breaks, we're going to fix it. So there's no real guarantee. It breaks, we fix it end of story. So that's kind of cool. Come on. Get out. I've been dealing with this the entire time. I should have given up on this video. I hope I have enough footage where I can put something together. Every time I set up and start talking, the goats come. He's thrown his back the backpack at me twice, knocked over the tripod. What are you doing? Most people have dogs in their videos. I've got a goat. One of these days, I'm gonna actually do some kind of scripted videos where I pre-plan and have them be a little bit neater, but I hope you enjoyed it. The goats have been a non-stop mess. They will get out of here. Get out. They have not left me alone, so it's been a little hard to film this. Get out. Get out. So I know this is not a budget backpacking video, but if you have the money to spend, I cannot re recommend it enough to go and check out Mikhail's website, take a look at their packs. They are making them with lighter material nowadays. They're not all seven and a half pounds, but if you are someone who just needs that pack, that just, there is no way. Are you kidding me? Ugh, get out of here. Just threw my backpack at me. If you are someone who needs just a good quality backpack, go check out the website, thanks. Get out!